found out what special quality those kids had. They had exceptionally developed visual perception. Visual and aesthetic. For them, the shape, color, and the like of surrounding objects was of critical importance. Some things were beautiful in their eyes, others the definition of ugly. And here's the kicker. They were always in consensus. But it was that very ability that ultimately became their blight. The particulars, however, I still do not know. Did you bring the battery? Here it is. Let's replace it. Go ahead. But you'll need to switch me off first. All right. Here come the shakes again. Well, no way around that. Yep. Shut me down. See you in a minute. attacks in one day. I'm breaking records. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Well, did you find out anything? Yes. Did you find your number? My number? Oh, no, not yet. But I did learn what the children were treated for. Remember I told you that the shape of objects was important to them? I do. Well, their illness was called morphophobia, fear of a shape, or to be more precise, an aversion to it. What kind of shape? The human body. They couldn't stand the sight of a human body. That was their disease. What do you mean that they couldn't stand it? They would literally get sick, vomiting at the sight of any person. Their teachers, doctors, passers-by, their own parents, even seeing each other in the mirror. What did they dislike so much about the human body? We never did find the answer. The children weren't able to articulate their feelings. First of all, they were really young. And secondly, they were unable to communicate at all with anyone. Any attempt at communication caused suffering and psychogenic vomiting. What an unusual disease. Yes, which is why the treatment was likewise unusual. Now I know the purpose behind those strange activities. Playing with cubes, collecting parts, and so on. So why were they assembling an in-body on stage? To cultivate in the children a positive association with the sight of a human body. They were using those bits to independently assemble a fairy tale character. A positive character. And thanks to their efforts, a young woman would take the stage. The defender of beauty, protecting a blossoming garden from a wicked witch. The witch symbolized ugliness? Evidently. Beauty would triumph over ugliness, and the children rejoiced at their involvement in bringing about a happy end. Bit by bit, their repulsion toward the human body was thus dislodged from their psyches, replaced by a new mindset, which filled the human body with beauty and goodness. But why did they need to go through a transfer? The transfer anchored this mindset. All the emotional experience obtained at the Gerbera Garden would anchor only in a new body. Otherwise, the therapy had no effect. I see. And the cubes? What was their purpose? The cubes have an extremely simple shape. Playing in the pavilions blunted the kids' excessive sensitivity. Their psyches were being simplified so as to start sewing in trivial categories. Good and evil, beauty and ugliness. 
Because their perception developed in an anomalous manner, the kids saw the world of shapes very differently, in a way that grown-ups could never understand. And there was no other way to save their lives other than to make them simpler. I'm still having trouble understanding. Hold on. Meyer. Hennebish. My name is Ida Meyer. You remembered? I found a journal. It contains my data. Here. Ida Meyer, age 26, City of Geneva. My personal number. And a date. August 15th, 2058. What year is it, by the way? 76. Whoa. So, I'm a psychologist from Geneva, and I've been lying in Mongolian soil for 18 years. In a candy box. And not in soil, but in sand. Very well, in sand. And now I'm in a flower vase, trying to verify my number. Only... Damn it. What? It's not working. The network interface. I can't get online. I guess the vase doesn't integrate with the web. Anibish, there's another network terminal underneath the TV. It's functional only without power. If you can power it up, I'll be able to get online. Help me understand something. What? How did the kids react to seeing a mechanical body? The same way as an organic one. They puked. But then how did they interact with the staff? Their bouts of morphophobia were suppressed. The complex was equipped with these emitters. I don't know how they worked, but exposure to them enabled the kids to communicate with the staff as well as among themselves. Got it. Did you power up the terminal? Not yet. The reason is both simple and evident. Simultaneous existence of two copies of the same person gives rise to problems we are not prepared to tackle, as clearly demonstrated by the sorrowful experience of the recent past. For now, strict prohibition on duplication and forced deactivation of existing duplicates remain the only solution to the situation. Deactivated neurocopies are retired into secure storage facilities for likely reactivation in the future when a legitimate solution is found. This is one of the cases when... Ida, our terminal burned down. I know, but I managed to check the number in time. You did? So what's the news? Are you going home? The news is bad. I no longer have originals right. There's nowhere for me to go. Why? I was restored. Three years ago, Ida Meyer was confirmed dead and restored from a reserve neurocopy. She currently lives somewhere in Geneva. We don't seem to have much luck. How did she die? It says here, died in a disparatoxin emission in 2058. This means you are now a duplicate? Correct. My very existence is illegal. Well, don't fret. We'll improvise. Improvise? Sure. We'll find you a normal body with legs. With legs? And then what? Then? Then we'll live our lives, selling flowers. Anibish, listen. When my battery runs out, I want you to put my flowers into secure warranty. I mean, into a glass cell, yes? That is a secure evacuation. I understand. What? What I mean is, please put my neurochip in a cell which... Anibish, into a camera of giants. 
or camera of dreams. What's with your voice? I don't know. A camera of tides? What are you talking about? I'm malfunctioning somehow. My thoughts are out of order. But I think it's over. You need repairs. I don't need anything, Anabish. I'll be put to sleep soon. Disconnected. And for a long while, I bet. So, you've decided? Yes. That is my decision. So you wake up and go right back to sleep. Got it. More like, wake up, get totally confused, then go back to sleep. What are you confused about? The explosion, for one thing. I haven't a clue how I'm connected to it. You got caught in an emission. That's just bad luck. No, Enabish, it's not that simple. I found another mention of my name, here, in the database, in the search history. Somebody was searching for information about me. So what? What's so strange about that? The fact that it was the only query for my name in the entire search history, made 20 minutes before the explosion. Who made the query? A man named Mark. Mark Darren. He's listed as transfer operator. The explosion happened on his shift. There's even a recording of it. And also, how curious. What? Going by the recording, there was an equipment breakdown not long before the explosion, at around the same time the query was made. Yes, I want to know what happened there. What kind of a recording is it? A report. It was saved automatically. It mentions some kind of a malfunction that, because it wasn't corrected in time, forced a modification in the transfer procedure. And no, I don't know the nature of the modification. I haven't yet figured it out. Why do you even care? Is that really important now? It is to me, because aside from these fragments of the past, I have more fragments of the past than, I mean... Ida. Hey. It happened again. I'm getting worse. I'll repeat, you need repairs. You need to know the cause of the problem before you can correct it, which I do not. Could it be those processing errors you've mentioned? Which errors? You know, the ones that accumulate over time. Impossible. I've just rebooted myself. They don't accumulate so quickly. Something else is happening here. Your voice is changing. If only it were just the voice. I'm at a loss. The reasons could be many. Could be my synchronizer is on the fritz. I've heard of cases when the neurochip malfunctioned due to a deteriorating link with the DNA. Either that or my neurocopy is failing. But if that's the case... What then? Nothing. Let's just hope it's the synchronizer. Let's. Then we'll replace it with a new one. Sure. There's a new one here in a small. Distance close. Give me the pavilion number. I'll go and get it. Is... in six rooms soft? Got it. And, um, don't go crazy just yet. Try. Try? Yes. Did you bring it? Not yet.
referring to. During a transfer, the ability to speak was not blocked out for one of the kids. That is, he was talking to himself, to his own copy. I see you. Go on in. <laughs> 